humans are naturally curious, which is why we're always digging around in the dirt trying to find bits and bobs from hundreds of years ago. And sometimes those discoveries are downright absurd. From fire mummies in the Philippines to a supposed dragon man in East Asia, here are 20 most mysterious things discovered by archaeologists. Number 20. European Cannibalism There have been reports of extreme starvation throughout history, with people resorting to eating grass and tree bark to survive. But the situation was so dire in 1609 and 1610 that English colonists in Jamestown, Virginia were forced to eat each other. It was a rumor at first, but archaeologists have now found proof. Researchers from the Smithsonian Museum of Natural History announced that they'd found the only evidence of cannibalism by Europeans at any European colony, including Dutch, English, Spanish, and French, from 1500 to 1800. They made their discovery in 2012 or 2013 after finding human remains about two and a half feet down a trash deposit in a cellar dating back to the 17th century within a building inside the James Fort site. Not to get all gruesome, but they discovered portions of a 14-year-old girl from England, and the cuts on her body were intentional. There were closely spaced chop marks on her skull and multiple cut marks where they would have removed muscles, cheek meat, tongue, and similar body parts. The discovery of the body answered a question that historians have long had about what happened during the winter of 1609 when approximately 80% of colonists died. Now we know. They ate each other. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the star topic. Just when you thought it couldn't get any weirder than finding mummified bodies, archaeologists discovered what no one was supposed to see. Top research institutions were sent these photos by supposed archaeologists on a solo excavation mission in Egypt. They apparently uncovered this massive winged creature that looked like a human skeleton. Now, I'm inclined to have my doubts, but what do you think? Would something like this exist? What do you think it is? Comment down below with the hashtag StarTopic and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed on screen. With that said, let's keep things moving. Number 19. The Black Sarcophagus Egypt is an archaeologist's dream digging environment since it has such a rich history. It's so well known for its incredible finds that any time construction work takes place, there's a standard archaeological dig to make sure nothing important will be lost forever underneath a building. It's a good thing that happened when a new structure was being prepared for in 2018 because archaeologists discovered something incredible in the Sidi Gaber district of Alexandria. During a routine dig, they found a considerable tomb measuring 104.3 inches by 72.8 inches by 65 inches. It was absolutely massive and was made from black granite, which isn't exactly the norm. According to reports, the coffin was the largest one to be unearthed so far in the city. But that's not even the most surprising part. Even more exciting is that it's about 2,000 years old from around the Ptolemaic period and has never been opened, which is rare when many are often found and plundered. Near the tomb, archaeologists also found an alabaster head, which is believed to be a depiction of whoever's in the tomb. Although they didn't immediately know who it was because the coffin was sealed with mortar. So far, they believe it was someone of high status because of its size and materials. Number 18. Fire Mummies in the Northern Philippines if you were to make your way 4,000 feet up the side of Mount Timbak, about 200 miles north of Manila in the Philippines, you'd find the remains of hundreds of people. It sounds like something out of a horror movie, but it's actually much more interesting than that. About 80 sacred, dark caves in these remote mountains are home to corpses called fire mummies, and only a few people know their specific locations. An ancient race from the Philippines, known as the Ibaloi people, used to smoke their dead until they were dry to mummify them before storing them in the caves. Some of them have been there for over a thousand years. 
The government has not publicized where the caves are for fear of vandalism and theft, but you would need to drive for about five hours to get to the villages of Kabayan before taking a five-hour hike up stone steps. If you were fortunate enough to see the fire mummies, you'd likely be impressed by how well preserved they are. The Ibaloi tribe from between 1200 and 1500 CE would begin the mummification process even before the person died. They would make them drink a very salty drink, and the body was washed and put in a seated position over a fire after they passed. The body would then be dried, and tobacco smoke was blown into their mouths to dry the internal organs before herbs were rubbed on the bodies. The process could take weeks or even months, and was only stopped in the 1500s when Spain colonized the Philippines. Number 17. Death Whistle Whistles might seem like nothing more than children's toys or something a referee would use in a sports match, but archaeologists discovered they were a pretty significant tool many hundreds of years ago. They were first found in an Aztec temple in the hands of a male skeleton in Mexico who had been sacrificed. The skull-shaped whistles in his hands were thought to be ornaments, but further research revealed they might have been used during ceremonies, battles, and sacrifices. As time went on, it was revealed that they were death whistles, and ancient Aztecs used them in burial rites for rituals with the thought that the dead might need them to get into the spirit world. Some experts also think the whistles were blown when a victim was killed, or that maybe the haunting sounds of the whistle guided the souls into their afterlife. They sound every bit as eerie as their backstory. Air flows inside the whistle's cavity, which creates fluctuating pressure, leading to an unusual sound like stormy, chaotic winds. When the sound gets into the chamber, the vibration generates a strange sound similar to an animal growl. Number 16. Headless Viking Dorset Building a road is usually a pretty straightforward process, but that certainly wasn't the case when the Weymouth Relief Road in Dorset was constructed in 2009. That's because 50 skeletons were discovered at Ridgeway Hill in an old quarry pit, with all the heads separated from the bodies. Workers had stumbled across a Viking mass grave, and it looked like all the Vikings had been decapitated before being thrown into shallow graves. Oxford archaeology archaeologists said it was a disturbing and exciting discovery, and that scientific analysis analysis had determined that they were executed Vikings. Using digital and 3D recording technology and traditional archaeological methods, the skeletons were removed so that studies could be carried out to find out what had led to their deaths. I'm gonna take a stab in the dark here and say it's because their heads weren't attached to their bodies. Archaeologists also think the men were stripped of their clothing before burial, and many of them had defensive wounds, to imply not all of them died without putting up a fight. Damage to shoulders and necks also revealed that one sword blow wasn't often Often enough to decapitate them. Most of the men were between 18 and 25 years old, with one over 50 and another in their early teens. Chemical analysis of their teeth revealed that none of them were from Britain and instead came from Arctic and subarctic regions. Number 15. Ashkelon Sewers when archaeologists started fossicking around in an ancient sewer in Ashkelon in 1988, they thought they'd stumble across hundreds of animal bones. But what they had actually found in this port city on the shores of the southern Mediterranean coast in Israel was the remains of almost 100 babies. Even to this day, it remains the largest infant mass grave ever discovered, and we don't even know with any certainty why 97 babies ended up in a sewer. I feel like that's something we should probably know. The bodies were found with pottery, coins, trash, and animal bones, so nothing indicated the babies had been in any type of funerary practices. This led archaeologists to come up with two possible theories. The first was that the Romans didn't view babies as fully human. If a baby was unwanted or sick, it was common to abandon it and let the gods determine its fate. Girls were often more likely to be killed, as boys were heirs and could support their parents in old age. On the other hand, girls were a bit more of a burden because they sometimes needed a dowry to marry. But the majority of the skeletal remains came from male babies. Out of the bones they managed to extract DNA from, 14 were male and 5 were female. Therefore, the other possible theory related to the sewer's location. It was found underneath a Roman bathhouse that may have once been in the red light district. If it doubled as a brothel, the workers might have discarded the children there. Number 14. Mount Owen Moa about 30 years ago, archaeologists were exploring caves on Mount Owen in New Zealand when they found a strange-looking claw with flesh and muscles that looked like it belonged to some kind of dinosaur. 
It was incredibly well preserved and was thought to have been a 3,300 year old leg belonging to the moa, a flightless bird that became extinct about 800 years ago. Moa first existed around 8.5 million years ago with about 10 species. The largest of the species stood at up to 12 feet tall and could weigh over 500 pounds. The smallest was around the size of a turkey. They disappeared at around the same time humans arrived, which is probably not a coincidence. Many experts have concluded that these birds had healthy populations, so humans were likely to blame for their demise. Around 2020, news broke that the moa may have been a candidate for revival because of the DNA that could be extracted from that well-preserved leg. Given it was 2020, most people said absolutely do not go through with that. However, a Japanese geneticist has already been carrying out preliminary work toward bringing the moa back from extinction. They wanted to extract DNA from it and introduce it to chicken embryos. A member of parliament in New Zealand, Trevor Mallard, even said that reviving the moa in the next 50 years or so was a viable idea. Number 13. Dragon Man just when we thought we knew everything there is to know about where we came from, Chinese researchers go and uncover something that changes everything. In 2021, researchers unveiled an ancient skull that may have belonged to an entirely new human species. They say it is our closest evolutionary relative among ancient human species like Homo erectus and Neanderthals. The skull, nicknamed Dragon Man, came from a group of humans living in East Asia about 146,000 years ago and was discovered in Harbin, Northeast China in 1933. However, it only became recently known because the construction worker who found it all those years ago smuggled it home to keep it out of the hands of occupiers. It remained in a well for 80 years, and before his death, he told his family about it. It then ended up in the hands of scientists. The skull was massive compared to most other human skulls and had big teeth, a gigantic mouth, nearly square eye sockets, and thick eyebrow ridges. Even though the head was large, the brain would have been reasonably similar to ours. Scientists think the owner of that skull would have been rugged and powerfully built, but we don't know how he lived since the skull was removed from where it was found. Number 12. Giant Ice Age Mammoth Bone Structure how do you think communities from many thousands of years ago would have survived out in the open? It's not like they had building materials and could whip up a quick shelter, and there weren't always going to be caves to shelter in either. Well, researchers gained insight into just how they may have done it when they discovered a massive structure from the Ice Age built from the bones of at least 60 mammoths. Archaeologists at the Kostenki Borshevo Archaeological Complex on the Don River found a circular structure of about 12 and a half meters or 41 feet in diameter, dating back around 25,000 years. At that time, most communities were mobile hunter gatherers, and the structure was one of the oldest known mammoth bone buildings that would have taken a considerable amount of time and effort. The skulls of 64 mammoths and 51 lower jaws were used to make the walls, and even more bones were scattered throughout the interior, including horse, arctic fox, reindeer, bear, red fox, and wolf. Alongside the bones, they also found stone and flint chips that would have come from creating sharp tools for scraping hides and butchering animals. Number 11. Coffin Birth in 2010, archaeologists discovered a woman's remains in Imola, Bologna, Italy that had them scratching their heads. Her skeleton looked perfectly normal, but it appeared that she had a fetus that had been partially birthed after her burial. Now, that might lead you to believe that the baby was alive when its mother was buried, but fortunately, that's not the case. The baby may have been through the birth canal after death due to post-mortem fetal exclusion, also known as coffin birth. The woman lived around the 7th or 8th century CE and had a hole in her head that made researchers think she had gone through an ancient surgical procedure called trepanation. This involved using a scraping tool to remove remove a piece of skull to treat illnesses like depression, head injuries, and heart sickness. She may have had the treatment for pregnancy-related issues, but died during the treatment. She was thought to be between 25 to 35 years old and would have been approximately 38 weeks pregnant, meaning she was due to give birth soon. A San Francisco area OBGYN said that gas may have built up in her body once she was buried, resulting in the dead fetus being delivered through a rupture caused by the gas. Number 10. Evidence of a Crucified Person When excavations were being conducted before a housing development went up in Cambridgeshire in the UK, archaeologists discovered something quite remarkable – rare evidence of Roman crucifixion. 
They had uncovered a cemetery with the graves of 48 people, all of whom showed signs of hard manual labor. But there was one skeleton in particular that grabbed their attention. It was the body of a man in Roman England who was likely enslaved and had been crucified during the 3rd or 4th century AD. He had a nail hammered through one of his heel bones and had thinning in his leg bones indicative that he had been chained to a wall for an extended period before his crucifixion. During the crucifixion process, he would have had his arms tied to a cross and his feet nailed to the ground. That position would have made it hard to breathe, and he likely would have suffocated. Generally, crucifixion was reserved for people who had committed serious crimes, such as treason against the state or rebellion. It's likely that he, along with all others in that cemetery, were enslaved. Number 9. Paintings in Rock Shelters and Caves our ancestors from thousands of years ago didn't have pens and papers. They had to use what they had in their natural environment to write notes and scribble, which was often rocks. Unlike paper, rocks are permanent, so we've been able to study and enjoy those pictures from tens of thousands of years ago. An excellent example of cave paintings is in the Bembetka Caves near Bhopal in India. It's now a UNESCO World Heritage Site and is the oldest known rock art in India. It's also one of the largest prehistoric complexes in the world. When you get to Bimbetka Rock Shelter, your jaw will just drop. It is absolutely incredible. There are about 760 rock shelters, and at least 500 of them have paintings. However, just 20 are open to the public. Among the most famous of those caves is one called Zoo Rock, which has all different animals painted on the walls, like elephants, antelopes, horses, and bulls. The paintings come from between 10,000 BC and 5,000 BC. There were also plenty of pictures depicting everyday life, like hunting, dancing, and music. The caves were first discovered by archaeologists in the 1950s, and the entire area had been deserted for many years. Number 8. Prehistoric Shell Mound in China a drilling survey was being conducted for factory construction in 2013 in the Zhejiang province of East China when archaeologists discovered a prehistoric shell mound dating back about 8,000 years. Shell mounds are ancient human settlement sites that are identifiable by discarded shells from the food they had eaten. As it turns out, it was the earliest and most deeply buried shell mound site in all of China's coastal areas. Testing concluded that it was between 7,800 and 8,300 years old, and it contained a wide range of exciting artifacts like stone tools, shellfish, bone, wood, and pottery. There were also remains of rice cultivation, animals, terrestrial plants, and aquatic life. The site didn't look like much to the average person, but it was a gold mine for archaeologists. The uncovered mound could provide evidence of the sea level 8,000 years ago and how early humans adapted to a marine environment. As testing showed that it might have been 8,000 years old, this site may also disprove the idea that there have been just 5,000 years of continuous Chinese civilization. Instead, there may have been 8,000 or even more. Number 7. Tomb of an Emperor's Grandmother Probably one of the last things you expect to find when expanding a building is a massive ancient tomb, and especially not one containing the nana of the first emperor, Qin Shi Huang. In 2014, excavation works were underway in the Shaanxi province of northwest China to expand the Xi'an University's campus. It was during this excavation project that they discovered a colossal tomb complex covering 173,325 square meters, or about 0.066 square miles. It spanned about 1,804 feet long and 1,017 feet wide, and is the second largest tomb ever discovered in China. As you would imagine from such a large tomb, there's more more in it than just the emperor's grandmother's body. During the early stages of exploring it, they uncovered two carriages and a dozen horse skeletons to indicate that six were used to pull each carriage. Horses and carriages are symbols of high rank, which would generally mean that the deceased was a member of the royal family or an emperor. Inside the tomb, archaeologists also discovered engraved pottery and gold, silver, and jade fragments. Number 6. A 2,100-year-old cat geoglyph 
Just in the nick of time before nature claimed it completely, archaeologists with the Ministry of Culture in Peru found a 2,100-year-old geoglyph of a cat in southern Peru's Nazca Desert. While they had already discovered many other drawings in the area, the cat was newly found on a steep slope and measured about 121.4 feet long. It dates back to 200 BCE and 100 BCE during the late Paracas period and forms part of the UNESCO World Heritage Site in the area. The cat geoglyph is just one picture of a series of drawings known as the geoglyphs of Nazca. They are all in the Rio Grande de Nazca River Basin's desert plains, which is about 250 miles from Lima, the largest city in Peru and the capital. According to researchers, the cat was almost disappearing because of natural erosion, but it's proof of the rich and varied culture in the area. Representations of felines were common in this area, but were normally made with textiles and ceramics rather than the land. They were created by ancient people who would make incisions or depressions in the desert floor and remove pebbles to expose different colored dirt. Number 5. The Moai Statues most people have heard of the stone statues on Easter Island, known as Moai, by the Rapa Nui people. They were carved with stone on the island and date back to 1100 and 1500 CE. No one's questioning that the statues were carved by hand on the island, but what's always been a great mystery is how on earth they were moved to their current position from the quarry where they were carved. Back then, they didn't have machines or even wheels, and there was no way that animals or men were strong enough to move them. Yet, they had moved at some stage because they are located about 11 miles miles from the quarry in which they were carved. Scientists have tested many theories like wooden sleds, ropes, and log rollers, but they're now starting to wonder if they had been carved in such a way as to make them easy to move with rope and human resources. The fat bellies of the statues let them tilt forward easily, and their D-shaped bases may have allowed people to roll and rock them from side to side to get them to their final destination. However, the 2,000 indigenous Rapa Nui living on Easter Island said the answer is simple and that they know the truth. They walked. Number 4. 1,200 year old mummies. Peculiar and unique were two words used by a Peruvian archaeologist to describe the discovery of a mummy that could be as old as 1,200 years. And you would definitely say the find was peculiar and unique. The mummy was found in a burial chamber about 15 miles from Lima in Peru. The burial chamber was 10 feet long and 4 and a half feet deep and contained the body of a man between the ages of 18 and 22 who was tied with rope and had his hands covering his face. Scientists used radiocarbon dating to find out just how old he was, and it's believed he could have been buried between 800 and 1200 AD. The mummy was found in Cajamarquia, which used to be the center of a city where up to 20,000 people lived. It was built in 200 BC and may have been occupied until 1500 BC. Alongside the man's body, an Andean guinea pig, traces of vegetables like corn and what appeared to be a dog were also found in the tomb. Number 3. Ancient Cave Dweller Cultivated Land for Food it's a long-held belief that cave dwellers were hunter-gatherers. They didn't cultivate the land for food and would simply live in caves and go out searching for animals to harvest the meat. But that view may have changed in 2017. Archaeological scientists in China discovered huge volumes of carbonized rice grains in caves that dated back to the New Stone Age. Over 10,000 grains of rice were found in the Fujian province of China in the Nanshan ruins, which dates back 5,300 to 4,300 years. These simple rice grains may prove that Nanshan cave dwellers could have farmed the land rather than getting food through hunting, collecting, and bartering. While you might think that they simply found the rice, that may not be accurate since farmland's weeds were found with the grains. After performing studies on the remains of the cave dwellers, it was also determined that they suffered from oral diseases and dental cavities, which is common in people from rural or agricultural societies. This may be even more proof that these cave dwellers managed to master farming techniques that allow them to hunt, gather, and grow their own food. Number 2. 2,700-year-old tomb complex in central China. In 2018, an incredible 2,700-year-old tomb complex was unearthed in central China, and it was unlike many archaeologists had ever seen before. It was so lavish and significant that it's believed to have belonged to an ancient royal household. When excavation of surrounding land began, they discovered 21 large tombs, 500 relics of jade, ceramics, and copper, and six horse pits. The discovery was made in San Mencia, a city in the Henan province. 
In the six horse pits, they found the skeletons of 28 horses that were lying on their sides, accompanied by dogs. In the 21 tombs lie 20 coffins, and they were all arranged in an orderly manner that cemented the idea that this household had a strict burial system and plan in place. An incredible number of items were found as the excavation project ramped up, such as food vessels, Chinese cauldrons, bowl-shaped ritual bronze vessels, and more. All of the relics were in remarkably preserved condition, so experts think they may help them understand more about production methods and technology of the time, since this tomb complex dates back to the early middle spring and autumn period of 771 to 476 BC. Number 1. Intact Ancient Shipwrecks Finding ancient shipwrecks can be pretty exciting, but there's usually a slim to 0% chance that they'll be remotely boat-like in appearance. Time and nature take their toll, and the boats eventually rot away. But that's not true in all cases. For example, a Greek merchant ship from over 2400 years ago was found lying on its side off the Bulgarian coast in the Black Sea. It was 75 feet long and is now known as the world's oldest intact shipwreck. Everything was intact, from the rudders to the rowing benches, and even even the contents of the hold. When a remote-operated vehicle was sent in to view it, the ship from 400 BC looked perfectly preserved. This is mainly because the Black Sea is free of oxygen, and the boat was untouched about 2,000 meters below the surface. Researchers say that it's preserved, safe, and unlikely to attract hunters. Another 1,700-year-old 62-foot boat dating back to the Roman Empire was also discovered in pretty good condition. It was found in what is now an open-pit coal mine, but used to be the site of a Roman city called Viminatium. The front portion of the boat was intact, and it had a flat bottom, six pairs of oars, and a sail. Archaeologists get to spend their professional lives on one big treasure hunt. Mostly, they find bits of old pottery and the occasional ancient relic, but coming across any of these things would undoubtedly be a career highlight. I mean, imagine finding an emperor's grandmother or stumbling across a shelter made of mammoth bones. It's absolutely incredible. How would you react if you found any of these sites? Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.